Let's now have a conversation with uh, Jeff Njau, who is with us in studio, just to really get his views on this interesting statistics. Many thanks, Jeff, for making time for us. Always a pleasure. Well, 54.7% uh, of SMEs do not have a data-driven approach to their business. In short, the report is saying that uh, out of uh, 10 SMEs, 5 do not have a data approach. By data approach, the report says using data in running their business, be it collecting data from your transactions for you to plan. Some of them do not even keep records. What do you make of this before we get into what really we discussed today? I actually think it's, 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 uh, it might even be worse than that. Mm -hmm. um, most of our businesses are very gut driven. Our businesses are not data driven. Our businesses are not driven by research. Our businesses are not driven by. You'll find many businesses, for example, don't keep any books of accounts, mm -hmm. which is the most basic form of data. Mm -hmm. um, then another challenge is the availability of that data in the first place, especially external data. How many businesses are there near you so that you can be able to know your competitive advantage? So we we still have have a way to go and this is very key for me because I run a research company market analytics and research mm -hmm. and I find that the people who consume research are mostly the very big entities mm -hmm. yet uh, there is a big uh -huh. there's a big population mm -hmm. that uh, would benefit a bit more from uh, research data and uh, market information yet they they don't mm -hmm. consume it uh, that's external research but it's still a challenge for us to start working on our own internal data, getting feedback mechanisms from customers, uh, getting what opinions from, uh, you know, customer satisfaction data from the people who we interact with on a daily basis. I All think right. it, I, I agree completely with the Interesting position there. Yeah. So, Jeff, today we want to talk about tips for successful entrepreneurs. Yes. And uh, we've been on a journey really to educate people around uh, entrepreneurship yeah. and uh, we we just want to walk you through some of the tips in short and uh, of course Jeff will be guiding this particular process around uh, the SMEs and also the people who are already in business mm. but they really want to expand and what are mm. some of the tips let's mm. take a look now well one of them is the ability to act. That means you have to be decisive, execution intelligence, no procrastination. Jeff, what do you mean by this, if you can simplify it for us? What I mean by this is that it takes, uh, there are very many people who go out and want to do business, but all the time they keep pushing it, say tomorrow is a better day, tomorrow is a better day. There is no better day. Today is a better day. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, uh, if you don't do it yesterday, you've lost one day. Mm. So you need to have execution intelligence. Act right. Act as soon as it is. One of the differences between illiterate business people and literate business people. Literate business people, the ones who've gone to more school, have degrees, PhDs, they counter plan, they replan, they over plan. Mm. The literate guy will just jump at it. Mm. And that's why most of them have way, way, way more business acumen and success. Mm. So act on the business. Mm -hmm. uh, start, see an opportunity, seize it. See an opportunity, seize it. What's mm -hmm. the worst that can happen? The worst mm. is that you lose some money. Mm. But there's also a probability that you will make money. Mm -hmm. So act on it. Mm -hmm. Execution intel There's actually a book on execution mm -hmm. that just teaches people on how to do it. Strike it and strike it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, one of the other tips I'm seeing there is the ability to be diligent. Yes. And uh, if I'm a business person, like mm. as we, we've always had that example of Njoro, the yes. guy with the car wash. Yeah. He's been in the industry, but how do you measure diligence? Diligence is waking up early in the morning. Diligence is opening the thing. If you've said that the car wash will be open at 8, you'll be open at it. But if your neighbors, your competitors are opening at it, you best open at 7.30 or 6. Mm. Because there are some matatus that start way earlier. So maybe you might even want to open at 4. So that by the time they are starting their rounds at 5, 
he's already open. Joro is already open. Mm. It means that uh, he's there by late in the evening because there are some routes that do 24 hours. Mm -hmm. He has an ability to keep long hours. He has an ability to, if he's not the one doing it himself, he has some staff there mm -hmm. who can be able to manage it all the time. He has a financial services system so that if someone says, I'll pay by M-Pesa, he won't say, eh, go look for a place to withdraw, then bring me cash. Mm -hmm. it, de decisiveness and diligence is putting in the long hours, being there, uh, being there to solve problems. There's mm -hmm. a client who's come and is angry, maybe there's a problem with his car. He's able to calm the guy down. It is putting in the hours, being there in heart, in soul, and that's how money, ma money is made. Interesting. And Jeff, for entrepreneurs who have been in the industry, but yeah. they're feeling that they're not breaking the ceiling, yeah. especially perhaps you're in a business that other people are in. Mm. And uh, what, what uh, tips can you give such people, especially when it comes to perseverance? Because you might just be on the verge of uh, transforming that business into something bigger and better. But many people nowadays, they're not as patient. They do not persevere. Mm. One thing I'll tell, and I agree with you completely, Abby, because, but one thing that I'll always say, when you see the market is, the business is not making as much money, you're not doing as much sales, you need to know that that's feedback that the business is giving you. Um, and the first question you ask yourself is, what is the business trying to tell me? Is it that I am too pricey? Is it that the product that I'm offering, the market is, doesn't want to, to, to consume it? Mm. Is it that the product is not as good? So even as we, you endure and uh, have tolerance in the business, listen to the business. Listen to what the customers are saying. Ask hard questions. Sometimes you might even need to bring in someone who has zero feelings for you to tell you these hard things. So that by the time you're deciding, let me stay on another month, let mm -hmm. me stay on another two months, mm -hmm. you are in a confident position because you've listened and you have adjusted accordingly. I see some people pour in good money uh, onto bad business. What does that mean? You are enduring in a business that you clearly can see the fundamentals are wrong. You're in a bad location and in business location is key, especially if you're in retail. Mm. You maybe have not advertised well. Yeah. And if the more liquid you are and you're pushing money there, the more probability that you're pushing money in a dead hole. Mm -hmm. But what among the things that you do is you listen to the business, see the fundamentals. Is the position right? Is the price right? Is the product right? If all these things are right, stay on. Mm -hmm. But if some of these things are not right, adjust them. Because sometimes it's always, it's, it's sometimes safe to exit if you feel the fundamentals are not right. right. So that you don't keep investing in something that doesn't make sense. All right. And uh, Jeff, if I was to get to your closing thoughts on today's uh, uh, presentation around tips for successful entrepreneurs, yeah. what, how would you wrap it up? I'll wrap it up, one, with passion. You need to have fire to succeed. You need to have fire to succeed. The second thing I'll wrap up as I wrap up this conversation is that you need to know that Rome was not built in a day. No big business was built in a minute. So you have to put in the long hours. You have to have tenacity despite of the chances of failure. And failure is part of the game. Mm. Failure is part of the game. I like game. that. Mm -hmm. It is part of the game. Mm. Actually, when you fail, you know how to not do something else. I always say that failure is like paying school fees. Mm -hmm. So the more, actually, all the business people who are out there, you have a degree, you have a PhD in that thing because you've paid school fees of the many lessons you have learned along the game. All right. The next, B, market-centric. Mm. Listen to the demand. What are these guys saying? What are the customers saying? Uh, how can you be able to tweak your product so that you can bend? As the guys who are here, they are talking about peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending because mm. they've seen that there is a gap, because they are listening to the customer. Sure. The guy who will survive in the future is a guy who listens to the customer. The guy who will shut down and some of them are the big entities that exist, mm -hmm. are the guys who are so stringent, they don't listen to the customer. Interesting. Quite uh, interesting to hear this, uh, Jeff. And uh, of course, time is not on our end. But yeah. thank you so much. So, so. I loved it. Very, very, 
a very impactful conversation there. Jeff and Jao, our business coach, just walking us through some of the tips for successful entrepreneurs. I do hope that uh, you've captured a few of them, passion, as well as uh, tenacity and perseverance. Of course, a lot more you can get out of that. Well, let's take a recap on our Twitter poll question this afternoon. We are asking you, how have mobile lending applications changed your approach when it comes to accessing a loan? Well, here are the results as of this hour now. Well, 49% saying it is convenient, 16% saying not convenient, 35% saying they've never been interested in this. Let's keep the conversation alive on social media as we continue to engage on this very important subject. And that's where we bring it to a close on Business Today for now. My name is Abia Gina. Coming up next, we have our team on the KTN View with more across the country.